Uh, hello and welcome to the backlog grooming meeting for operator SDK 1.4.0. Um, 1.3.0 is still sort of in the pipeline. So I think Eric wants to take a moment to talk about that. Yeah, so technically this is the 1.4 meeting, but uh, I would like to pose an idea. Uh, so there are a few issues, more than a few issues actually in the uh, 1.3 milestone that are related to Kubernetes 1.19, in particular getting features that are in the uh, Kube Builder Go v3 plugin into the SDK that relate to um, Kubernetes 1.19. Uh, we are currently blocked by controller runtimes stable 070 release, which includes Kubernetes 119. Once that is released, then Kubebuilder can bump to that stable version in the Go v3 plugin and stabilize that plugin and the project version. Um, once that happens, then the SDK can adopt the Go v3 plugin and make that the default, thereby um, getting a lot of the features that are uh, in issues in that milestone. So what I would like to pose is that we arbitrarily block the 1.3 release until the date that um, Kube Builder stabilizes their upstream plugin, uh, which will be the same day that control runtime releases the uh, 070 stable release. Otherwise, we're kind of cutting a release that doesn't have that many features, changes, or whatever in it. And on top of that, there are still a ton of open issues in the 1.3 release milestone. Do we have any rough idea when that's going to be? We were told uh, originally that 070 was going to be released uh, either the week of Thanksgiving or the week beforehand. But I think there was one upstream issue that cropped up that they needed to deal with. Uh, from what I heard yesterday, um, that is going to be resolved very soon, um, potentially today uh, or tomorrow. So I expect a release of 070 latest Monday. Uh, and if it doesn't happen then, then I'm going to uh, go and talk to the upstream folks again um, and make sure that we have an actual timeline to get this out. Uh, so what I'm basically posing is we block the 1.3 release on controller runtime um, and presumably we will be able to cut the release next early next week uh, at the latest. What about where does cube 120 stand then? What's that? Where does cube builder, I mean not cube builder, Kubernetes 120 stand? Right, uh, so that is the uh, next topic of conversation. And both of these are on the agenda, by the way. So I guess we're kind of covering those first. Um, the uh, Kubernetes 120 release is also slated for next week. Uh, controller runtime will need to bump to 0 0.8. We'll need to bump their Kubernetes dependencies, then bump to 0 0.8. And then that needs to get into um, a Kube Builder uh, Go plugin release. Luckily, there are no breaking changes, so it's not like we need to create a new Go plugin. Uh, we can just bump dependencies in the existing one. Uh, so I don't expect that to take uh, much longer than a week from when 070 control runtime is released. Um, but what I would also like to pose on top of what I just did for 1.3 is that we cut a 1.4 release as soon as uh, we can get 1.20 changes into the SDK. Do we need to call that 1.4? Could we call it 1.3.1? I don't want to do that because it's not a patch in Kubernetes versions. We're releasing a whole minor yeah, yeah, version, okay. or yeah, a whole minor version of Kubernetes. Can you walk us through the, um, like, why would 
not waiting, why wouldn't we want to wait three weeks? Um, I think this, this mainly has to do with um, some of our downstream dependencies. Uh, but at the same time, I, it would just be nice to get on the cadence of iterating quickly on upstream releases. So as soon as the new Kubernetes version is released, we in both the SDK and in upstream repos also release versions that contain that minor version of Kubernetes. Um, and that just makes things a lot more fluid for our users and we're always on latest. And then we can always um, start iterating on that version of Kubernetes and figuring out what features we want to add for this and the next minor version. And that also prevents us from being left pretty far uh, back in the uh, minor version release cadence, which is currently where we're at. We're still on 118. We're waiting on 119 when 120 is being released next week. I want to avoid that as much as possible going forward. Um, yeah, so think, being diligent about releasing quickly is important. I think doing a 1.4 sooner than waiting is kind of, we're doing it kind of as a play catch up because we've been on 1.18 for a long time and then bumping to 1.19 now and then waiting. I think if we were ahead of the schedule or at least soon after they come out, we could have said, oh, let's just do the next release. Um, I'm OK with what you proposed. Um, from a community hat on. Yeah, it doesn't bother me either. I would want, um, like, if we do agree to do that, I think this probably deserves an email to the greater list. Yeah. Like, since we've kind of announced that we're trying to do every three weeks, just uh, every, anytime we don't have that, uh, move away from that expectation, we should just tell everyone. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and I would also try and generalize this a little bit and say, we might have the odd uh, minor release come out that um, as soon as a Kubernetes version comes out, and we are able to, we will make a release in the SDK. Yeah, that um, seems and like a pretty solid plan. Yeah. So yeah, every three weeks, but then in between we might have another minor release. Because why not? So yeah, uh, are there any objections so, to this? Any, yeah, go ahead. Um, I think this is reasonable because like as you said, we are playing catch up, but I don't, I don't know if I feel this is a strong enough reason for us once we have caught up for us to like break our release cadence because because a new version of Kubernetes comes out. Like I feel like that's infrequent enough and it certainly is important enough that it behooves us to like include it as soon as possible, perhaps adding it into the current sprint, you know, not waiting until the next backlog of meeting. But I don't like given how much stuff we tend to have in flight at one time, I, I don't know if like trying to, you know, a new release Kubernetes comes out and we immediately try and cut a release, even though we have like, all the stuff that's, you know, in the current actual release we plan that's half finished. I don't know, that seems weird to me. Yeah, I 100% I get where you're coming from. And I think in an ideal world, that would be okay. But what I've noticed with our releases is that we do end up bumping them back like a week and we end up moving a bunch of issues out of each release. So having like an in-between release that is specifically for a Kubernetes version where we're not, it's not like a feature release, it's like a Kubernetes specific, like we're releasing because of Kubernetes. It's kind of like a different release in a sense or a different release cycle. Um, but still within our typical release process. And I've also seen some upstream projects doing this too, where they will, like, for different reasons, they will cut 
releases um, and specifically in the Kubernetes community. I can't think of one off the top of my head right now, but I feel like I have seen this before. They'll even tag the release differently. So they'll say like, this is a Kubernetes like 120 tag uh, and then they'll have normal Senver tags. I have an alternative idea here just to maybe simplify because I, I feel like three weeks is pretty often and pretty much any feature could probably wait three weeks, but maybe an upgrade to Kubernetes in the Kubernetes version, you do want to get that out as soon as possible. So maybe what we ought to do is when a Kubernetes release is about to happen, we delay a Y release until that happens and then go out and then resume our regular cadence afterwards rather than trying to do an additional one in the middle. This is just a lot of Y releases. I think it will be confusing if, you, if I, you're not like paying a lot of attention. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's in, a great idea. Yeah, so in that case, it would have happened with a with 1.3. We could have pushed 1.3 to pick up 1.20. Um, yeah, and yep. I, but, I guess while we would normally do that, we definitely should have uh, one Kubernetes bump per release, not not two. And so we need to bump to 119 first. And that's, that's the fair. only reason why, given the scheme that Austin just posed, we wouldn't <clears throat> we wouldn't right. do it this time. Because but yeah, in general, yes. This is a special case because of the the timing of the two and the delay of 119 and then yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Yeah. I agree because our other downstream uh, dependencies like operator registry are still using 119. So it makes sense to have a release with 119 and then bump to 120. Does that um, help answer your question, Jonathan, or is that? Yeah, that sounds good. Else? Okay. Um, okay, so I guess there's a few things to do here. The first one of which is, I guess we can, unless anybody has any particular issues they want to raise for 1.4 or 1.3, uh, now that we're pushing it back a little bit, um, we should probably like not do a full grooming or any grooming and just say that everything that's in 1.3 will be released for 1.3. Um, or I guess we could do a 1.4 grooming anyway. Uh, well, remember, uh, uh, the schedule is getting kind of weird because of the holidays. Uh, currently, yeah. Um, so nominally, one three was supposed to come out tomorrow, but we're pushing that back. Uh, and then, I don't know, my schedule ends. Uh, January 14th is 1-4. Uh, January 14th is when we pushed back the next uh, release to the next grooming meeting. Release. Okay, but I don't... Right. So if we push back the one that's supposed to happen tomorrow, I can't imagine much work, if any, is actually going to happen on the next release by the time people get back from vacation and... The 14th of yeah. January happens. Yeah, I think the right thing to do is just um, call. So um, cut 1.3 as soon as possible. Make 1.4 our um, Kubernetes 120 release. And then for we keep our current schedule, but uh, make the next grooming meeting for 1.5. And that will be the like I'll change the milestone due date for 1.4 to like a week from today or whatever, and then keep 1.5 where it is so that our next grooming meeting um, will be for 1.5. And that will be released, I think, late December, early, or sorry, January, late December, late January. How's this? Can we, we'll do, we'll do 1.3, we've got that planned. We'll do 1.4, we've got that planned. 1.5. Let's just, can we um, just do a hard reset on the grooming meetings and the release cadence as soon as 1.4 comes out? Um, 
and Get schedule back. another grooming meeting like the day after one four comes out or a week after or something um well we got to do the one we we plan on doing the one four for kubernetes 120 which is next week so that's why i'm saying we're kind of shifting everything forward by one version so we're treating one five as the like before this meeting one four but now that this meeting is happening we're making one for the kubernetes 120 release Does yeah that make sense? Well, i guess i'm just suggesting that we don't have like so we've got one three planned i think we've got one four planned too which is just the kubernetes 120 and so yeah. anything that that we would talk about in this meeting would be for one five which is plus three from where we've currently got and so i'm suggesting that we just kind of postpone though that planning until we release one four we yeah uh, reconvene, do a black backlog grooming, reset our release schedule. That's Probably totally early reasonable. January. Yeah, I think that's a lot less confusing than all of the blab blabber that I just said. All right, so I'm going to change the milestones. I'm going to change the old one four milestone to be one five. I'm going to make a new milestone. Well, maybe I'll just change the one five milestone because it's currently blank to be one four and I'm gonna add a new issue to it that says bump cube. And it's gonna be due by well, when? I would, what I would do is create um, a new issue in the SDK if there isn't one already, which is bump to cube 1.20, move that into the 1.4 milestone and move everything else in the 1.4 milestone into the 1.5 milestone. I mean, Which the I numbers do don't actually want. mean anything. They're just titles, right? Yeah, pretty much. And you can just change it one four to one five, and then create a one four again. That'd be easier. All right. So while you're doing that, uh, so I, I guess uh, those are, yeah, I, we don't really need to do anything this meeting, uh, which I think is okay, especially given the holidays are coming up and I don't expect too much work to be getting done around then. So yeah. Do you know the issue number for the extant cube bump issue? I need to open an issue for it. Let me do that. Oh, sorry. I thought you said somebody said there was one. I just posted it in chat. Chat in Zoom. Oh. Yeah. So I guess the the other thing that we need to do is uh, send out this email um, and probably update our grooming meeting uh, draft or our uh, whatever it is, like how we conduct these meetings. Um, Jonathan, I think you own the document on uh, how grooming meetings are run. Is that is correct? A Google group post so anybody can. Yeah, I guess by ownership, I mean created, but um, if, if you want to take that on, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I could probably do it. No, that's fine. You want me to send out an email to the group saying, explaining what we just did? Uh, yeah, and update the doc. Or we can delegate one of the two tasks to somebody else. I don't understand what you mean by update the doc. The doc doesn't have any specific dates or anything in it. In the meeting invites, isn't there a procedure doc? You want me to change the meeting invite? 
Oh, oh, there's so sorry. There was a Google group post for uh, the backlog grooming procedure. So I guess these two things are the same thing, which is basically post a reply all on that um, Google group thread and just say, this is what we're now doing with the release cadence. So we're going to cut my releases when Kube version gets bumped. We're pushing stuff back because of the holidays. We're pushing back stuff because we need to bump Kube twice in a row. Yeah, well, uh, yes. So basically, we going forward, uh, when a new Kubernetes minor version uh, is slated for release, we will push that back the preceding operator SDK release such that we can incorporate that uh, Kubernetes version minor bump into the SDK. This one time we are making an exception because we are two minor versions behind where we are going to push back the 1.3 release until we can get 1.19 uh, into the SDK. And then immediately following that, we are going to release 1.4 with the 120 Kubernetes version bump. Okay, but if that's what you want me to say, I don't see what that has to do with backlog grooming procedure. It seems like that's just a general announcement that the list should know about. The, um, so the exception is the announcement, but we are changing the rule about how our release cadence looks because now we're pushing back uh, releases so that we can incorporate the latest Kubernetes version. That's the procedure change. Okay. I guess, okay, I guess how we do a grooming meeting doesn't change, but our release cadence is changing. If we explain it, the, the first part you said that we're pushing 1.3 back to pick up 1.19, we're moving 1.4 sooner to pick up 1.20, and in that same message, we could state that, you know, we'll reset the, we're doing this to, um, see now I'm just fumbling the same way. Um, <laughs> I think just that announcement would be, would suffice. And then when we do the next grooming and we reset, like Austin was saying, after that one, and we say, okay, here is the next set of releases, then we could announce those and say, okay, here's the plan going forward. Okay, I can send out that email. Awesome, thank you. Okay, do we have anything else to talk about right now? Okay, uh, I guess that's it for today then. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, I got to stop the recording.